On the 21st of January 1958, Charles Starkweather, a 90-year-old garbage collector of Lincoln, Nebraska, called at the home of his girlfriend, Carol Ann Fugit, age 14. She was not there at the time, so her mother and stepfather, Felder and Marion Bartlett, allowed him into the house to await her return. He was carrying a hunting rifle and began to play with it while he was waiting. Being only five feet two inches tall and having red hair, Starkweather was known as Little Red. He drove a hot rod and red comics. The film star James Dean was his personal hero, but his girlfriend's mother was evidently uneasy in his presence, for she shouted at him, telling him to stop fiddling with his gun. At this, Starkweather shot both Mrs. Bartlett and her husband dead. He then went on waiting until Carol returned. Carol Fugit knew what Starkweather was like, for a few weeks earlier she had joined him in carrying out a robbery at a gas station, during the course of which the attendant had been murdered. She was not distressed when she arrived home and found that he had killed her mother and stepfather, and apparently raised no objection when he went into one of the bedrooms and choked a two-year-old sister to death. The couple calmly put a notice on the front door, stating, Everybody is sick with the flu. They then made some sandwiches and sat down to watch television, as if oblivious of the corpses laying around. A few days later, the two teenagers drove off in Starkweather's hot rod, making their way across America. The police broke into the house in Lincoln and raised an alert, but... It was several days before the couple were arrested and during that time, the former garbage collector killed seven more people. The first of these was August Mayer, a wealthy farmer. The next two were a teenage couple, Robert Jensen and Carol King. The girl was raped repeatedly before being beaten to death. Then, C. Lower Ward, head of the Cattle Steelworks, his wife, and their maid were killed after being tied up and mutilated. Finally, in Douglas, Wyoming, Muir Collision, a shoe salesman, was shot dead. Attempting to get away from the scene of his last crime, Starkweather found that his car would not start and tried to force a passerby to help him. The passerby, an oil agent named Joseph Sprinkle, grabbed his rifle and held on to it until the police arrived. There were, by this time, 1,200 police and members of the National Grid in pursuit of the couple, and they were quickly arrested. Starkweather surrendering after being grazed by a bullet. Starkweather at first tried to protect the girl by telling the police that he had taken her hostage, but he stopped doing so when she called him a killer. He made a confession, declaring his hatred of the society he knew, which seemed to him to be made up entirely of goddamn sons of bitches looking for somebody to make fun of. He was executed in the electric chair at the Nebraska State Penitentiary on the 25th of June, 1959. Carl Fugate, who claimed to be innocent of the crimes to which Starkweather had confessed, was sentenced to life imprisonment. She was released on parole in 1977.